Hello, and welcome to my video on controlling network congestion with TCP. My name is Lori Gardner, and I am a student at Regis University. This video is my week three assignment for MSCT 600 Network Essentials. Let's get started. As mentioned, this video will discuss at a high level how network congestion occurs in a network and how TCP attempts to control this congestion. We'll begin with a brief description of what TCP is. Next, we'll discuss what network congestion is, some causes of network congestion, and why it's important to have mechanisms in place to control it. Lastly, we'll get to our main topic, which is how TCP attempts to control network congestion. TCP is an acronym for Transmission Control Protocol. TCP is a reliable data transfer service used in the transport layer and is responsible for packaging data received from the application layer on the source host and ensuring it is sent correctly and in order to the destination host. TCP uses several mechanisms to assure reliable data transfer, each of which are large and complex enough topics to command a video dedicated solely to them and a detailed explanation is outside the scope of this video. But to give you a general idea, Here's a brief description of the mechanisms TCP uses to deliver reliable data transfer service. Flow control, as its name suggests, is used to match the amount of data sent with the amount of data the receiver can handle. The receiving hosts communicate this to the sender as a variable called their advertised window. This variable can fluctuate with network conditions. A checksum is used to detect errors in the data transmitted. If the checksum calculated by the sender is different than the one calculated by the receiver, the data is most likely corrupt. If the checksum is the same, the data is assumed correct. Sequence numbers are used by the sender to number the segment sent. Using this number, the receiving host can verify not only that they have received all of the segments, but to assemble them in the correct order. Acknowledgements are used to acknowledge receipt of a segment and they're used by the sender to understand that the receiver did not receive data. Timers are set upon transmission of data. The sender waits a reasonable amount of time and if it has not received an acknowledgement of receipt from the receiver, it assumes the segment has been lost and retransmits it. TCP is an end-to-end -end service from source to endpoint. It is connection-based in that before a process can initially begin sending data to another, it must first establish a connection with the other via a handshake. TCP is used when accuracy of data is more important than timeliness. When timeliness is more important, UDP is most often used. Network congestion is a condition that occurs when the amount of data traveling on a network exceeds the network's capacity to handle and deliver this data. If you live in Colorado or have visited our mountain areas along I-70, you've most likely experienced a form of congestion known as traffic. We'll use this example to illustrate congestion at a high level. You can relate the bus stations to hosts, the buses to segments, and the Eisenhower Tunnel to the internet's routers and switches. In this example, you have 12 buses attempting to get to Grand Junction who can receive eight buses at a time. Ten buses are coming from Denver and two from Idaho Springs. TCP's flow control would handle the problem where 12 buses are attempting to be sent to a receiver that can only handle 8. But as we can see from the illustration, we have another problem. The Eisenhower Tunnel can handle two buses at a time. Therefore, regardless of the fact that Grand Junction can receive 8 buses at a time, only two at a time can actually get through the Eisenhower Tunnel. While Colorado has yet to figure out a way to relieve this congestion, also known as traffic, TCP attempts to control congestion on the network. This illustration is oversimplified because, of course, in reality, you would factor in the distance of the tunnel, the rate at which vehicles traveled through, as well as bi-directional traffic. But for this example, it serves our purposes. What causes network congestion? In a nutshell, network congestion occurs when the amount of data being sent exceeds the capacity of the network to send it. If you take a minute to think of all the data that is traveling at any given minute over the Internet, you can see where this might be a problem. Just to name a few, you have streaming media, iTunes, Netflix, Hulu, Skype. You have online gaming with Xbox and PlayStation 3. 
You have voice over IP, which a lot of residents and businesses have transitioned to over their traditional phone lines. You have real-time banking, uh, access to your banking information, e-commerce uh, in the form of Amazon, eBay. As we previously discussed, TCP is a reliable data protocol and is responsible for ensuring all data sent by the sender is received by the receiver in order. While there is certainly a great need to be able to transmit data accurately and in order, the mechanisms such as resending drop packets that we previously discussed and are used to achieve this reliable transportation can exacerbate the problem when congestion occurs because these mechanisms add even more traffic to an already overloaded network. This creates a vicious cycle which left unchecked could potentially cause a partial collapse or even worse a full collapse of the internet. Why do we want to control network congestion? Because consumers businesses, governments, and academic institutions have come to rely on the services networks and the internet provide and would come to a screeching halt without them. This image is just me being a little silly in that losing Netflix would not be catastrophic, but the true implications of a full or more likely partial network collapse would be both far-reaching and catastrophic. Just think of banking. You could lose access to your money or lose track of your money. Uh, governments, national security, social security payments, and other services they provide. The economic fallout from businesses that rely on the internet and may not be able to recover. We would lose communication in the form of cell phones and email and voice over IP. Uh, businesses who have begun to transition rapidly to cloud computing could lose access to their business applications, just to name a few. As we've seen, there's a great need for TCP to be able to control congestion on the network. TCP attempts to control congestion by adjusting the timing and amount of data sent in response to network conditions. If there is a lot of traffic and the network is congested, the sender must slow down to avoid drop packets, which require resending, further compounding the problem. If there is not a lot of traffic, the sender must speed up to avoid delays in delivery. TCP uses four algorithms in an attempt to control network congestion. Before we go on, we need to take a few minutes just to go over some basic terminology that we'll use in the upcoming slides. The first one is the advertise window, which is the amount of data the receiver states they are available to receive at that time. The congestion window is a variable used by the sender to adjust the amount of data it can send. The initial window is the size of the congestion window after the three-way handshake, and it cannot be higher than two. A transmission window is the lesser of the advertised window or the congestion window. And lastly, the slow start threshold is a variable equal to the congestion window divided by two, and it's initiated when congestion is detected. The first algorithm we'll discuss is the slow start algorithm, which is used by the TCP sender to control the rate at which it sends data. It starts with the sender initializing the congestion window variable to a low number not higher than 2. With each acknowledgement received, it increases the congestion window exponentially. When the sender identifies congestion has occurred, it drops the congestion window back to its starting value and starts the process again. As you can see from the table, the initial congestion window variable is set to 1. It sends one segment and receives an acknowledgement. The congestion window variable is set to 2. Two segments are sent. An acknowledgement is received, the congestion window variable is reset to four, four segments are sent, however this time an acknowledgement is not received, so the congestion window drops back to one and only one segment is sent. The slow start algorithm stops when either a timeout occurs indicating possible congestion, three duplicate acknowledgements are received indicating possible congestion, or when the congestion window equals the slow start threshold, and this is done to scale back due to impending congestion. In actuality, the sender can actually only send the lesser of the congestion window or the advertised window. The next algorithm we'll look at is the congestion avoidance algorithm, and it's used in conjunction with the slow start algorithm. It kicks in when congestion occurs. Here's how it works. When the congestion window equals the slow start threshold, signaling congestion could soon occur, the slow start ends and TCP transitions into congestion avoidance. It increases the number of segments more slowly than slow start. Its goal is to find the upper threshold at which data can be sent without congestion occurring. 
The third algorithm is the fast retransmit algorithm. When a sender has received three duplicate acknowledgments for a segment, this is an indication that the next sequence segment has not been received. To expedite delivery, TCP immediately retransmits the segment without waiting for the timer to expire. This speeds up recovery of the lost segment and gets delivery back on track sooner. The last algorithm we'll look at is the fast recovery algorithm, which works in conjunction with the fast retransmit algorithm. Once the fast retransmit has occurred, the fast recovery algorithm immediately follows. Because duplicate acknowledgments are being received, the sender can safely assume that while there may be a problem on the network, data is still flowing. With this knowledge, the sender uses the congestion avoidance algorithm instead of going all the way back to the slow start algorithm. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my video. Feel free to leave any comments. Also, please take a minute to review the next slide, which lists the references used in compiling the data for this video.